Man, it's a little glittery. Oh, I don't know why. Well, today is getting ahead of me. I've been at this for a few hours now. It's three o'clock now. And I, uh, I feel like I haven't gotten anything done. But today is the very last video before we start our journey to uh, Oklahoma for the start of Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0. And it's getting down to the wire. The Dakota's ready. What's not ready is packing the Dakota and seeing how and where we're going to put things uh, while we're on the drive. So today it's going to be pretty much all about that. Um, and if you look, I've got quite the mess to be working with. So what I'm going to try to do is figure out how all this stuff will go together, how we can get it all in the Dakota and we can get it all um, secured down and go from there. But I wanted to show you guys my process on this um, and show you guys what I'm bringing to be prepared for the trip. Um, if you don't know what it is, go to RockyMountainRaceWeek.com. Check it out. It's a self-contained, like, uh, five-day journey to four different racetracks where I can't have a vehicle follow me. I got to take the truck. I got to take my tools, my co-driver, which will be my wife this time. Um and we've got to try to make it about 1500 miles and drag race and kind of compete we're not going for competing this year as a personal goal we're going for finishing um but it's it's uh, exactly what i built this truck for um and i'm gonna give a lowdown on the truck if you don't know about it yeah but probably uh, the day of the race week but anyway let me get um started and showing you guys with what i got uh by showing you the list that i've come up with and it's a pretty expansive list and kind of look it over so this is just stuff that i've been kind of writing down trying to remember and this doesn't include any um personal items such <laughs> clothes and stuff like that but this is all stuff for the truck stuff for the GoPro for the videos and I'm gonna try to have a video out every night of this uh, or morning of uh, race week so fingers crossed I can get it all done it may not be the most beautifully edited but it's gonna be live action of what we you know what we're doing every day so all right well let me show you guys a little bit of what I bought for spare parts so the first thing I'll show you and they're in two different colored boxes because they're two different brands. It doesn't really matter. But I'm bringing some extra motor mounts. And these are only about eight bucks. But that 5.3 in the Dakota shakes like crazy. <laughs> and I'm afraid that eventually this vulcanization between this rubber and the metal is going to come apart. And I don't know when or if that will happen but i wanted to be prepared so i'm bringing extra motor mounts just in case um, so that'll be good insurance to have then my holly fuel pump i'm uh, oh, sorry my holly fuel uh filter is you can disassemble it and there's an element in there so while i know i cleaned out my whole fuel system and i got brand new lines you just never know if you're going to pick up some junk. So I bought a couple filters. So if I have to take it apart and fix that, I can. I got two of these. They're pretty cheap. I think they're like six or eight bucks a piece or something like that. So that's good insurance. Now to the big ticket items. These are blocks for the rear end. 
and I probably should have replaced them already and I have not um, but I really don't want to take the thing apart because it seems to be working like it should right now but I have aluminum blocks in the back of that truck uh, that lower the rear end down two inches I didn't think about it but they're known for cracking and splitting and breaking so I bought these steel blocks from uh, I think I got them from Amazon but they're rough country suspension which is a pretty reputable brand and if I need to if something happens to one of those I can throw the steel ones in and take care of it um, again I don't think I'm gonna have time to get these in there um, and right now it's working so I'm just gonna leave as be and hope nothing happens and if it does we'll be prepared big ticket item because when you're running these things for a long period of time it's hard on the fuel pumps sometimes and so I went ahead and bought another Holly uh, 340 liter per hour uh, fuel pump and I bought the exact one that's in there in case it does go out I got an identical one to put in there drop the tank throw it in go on about my business and then it comes with all the goodies and stuff this was this really makes me feel better I don't think it's gonna have a problem because my pump is in the tank and they stay a lot cooler that way um, and I think that that's a saving grace and my trucks not that crazy fast or anything so I'm not running these big PSI's so it should be okay but it's nice to have that insurance because I don't know what I would do if I didn't have that lastly a known fail point on the Holly Terminator X sometimes are the O2 sensors. So I went out and got another O2 sensor, Bosch 17025, in case my O2 sensor goes out. I'm gonna need that extra insurance just in case. So as far as parts parts, that's what I'm, these are the extra parts I'm going with. I am going with some other extra parts um, for example, I'm gonna bring uh, coil packs from the 4.8 for Gramps, and then I'm bringing an extra electric fan. Um, these are the old tires that were on the front of the truck. They're a little short, just in case something happens. These are my weld wheels and tires uh, that uh, my buddy Keith, who's gonna be on the trip with us, he had given me to, to you know to use as you know when I was testing. So these will be serviced as spares um and maybe some burnout tires who knows right and and then just i'm just gathering stuff up so i still have some fluids to get um because i'm going to change the oil before we go i'm going to change the i think i'm going to drain the trans fluid and then uh, re-add some fluid we'll see it's it's working really good right now i'm, I'm tempted to just leave that alone but what I gotta do is find a way to put all this stuff together, drain pans and extra wiring. And I, like, I've got some stuff for tools over here, you know, like a, a extra tool bag and uh, these roll out things. And, you know, I actually brought a, um, like a dolly or wagon, I guess you could say to load stuff in. So. Let me get started on figuring out where all this stuff is going to go, and then I'll come back and update you guys. All right, this has been a bit of a mind twister, but uh, I think I've got a plan. Let me show you guys what we got working with. Essentially, this grouping here is what needs to fit in here. Um, and I'll show you guys what I got going on. The only thing that's not here are two uh, fold-up chairs, which, you know, I could add those later. But so far I've got three tubs. I think we're gonna have four to be able to put our luggage in there. Um, but, so this tub has like some miscellaneous, like extra parts and like it's got wiring stuff down there, clips, uh, heat shrink, some gloves, brake clean, and just some miscellaneous, a little bit of extra tools, hammers, um, some extra wrenches, air compressor uh, for tires. So that's kind of what's in that one. This one's gonna be my main parts bin. 
So this is going to be, it obviously, you know, extra parts. So fuel pump, electric fan, some extra thermostats, coils, uh, spark plugs. And then this one will be like fluids. And so I still got to go get some oil to change stuff. I'm going to change the oil on Friday before we leave. But I'm going to have an extra thing of oil to, to, to do an oil change if I need to. Um, the jack's got to go. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna bring that stool. Um, we'll see. If, I'm not gonna be upset if we don't have room for that. It'd be nice to have. This. The plan for this is. This is what's gonna go in and out of the uh, hotel. I'll load all my electric stuff on here, the high dollar stuff, and my toolbox. Um, so it'll go on here, and it'll go in the hotel. Um, I'm still figuring out. I need to find a way to like get things hooked up easy to charge, so I can charge things if I need to. Uh, this is the awning, so that's coming with us. Fuel, uh, five gallon fuel cell, oil drain, and these are the spare tires and wheels. Um, this is the my spare toolkit I got from the Dakota for when I'm driving it, but I think I'm gonna bring my big one with my craftsman tools because I don't know, it's just. <laughs> That's my comfort and I can fit extra things in the top. And then here is my like additional spare tools. And I'm trying to get this as or organized as possible. And here are different um, extra wrenches and crescent wrenches. This whole bag right here has got my wiring stuff, which I really like that. I've been, it's always been bothering me trying to find all my wiring stuff in the tool bag. And I bought this thing for like 20 bucks, and it really does the job. Magnets, uh, channel locks, screwdrivers. You know, it's kind of got just about everything we need. So, what I'm going to do now is kind of start stacking stuff and seeing how I can get it all in there and organized. So, let's see how this goes. So I slept on it and did some thinking and I think I'm packing too much stuff so I'm going to make some adjustments. Um, so I woke up this morning and ran some errands and got some things and uh, I'll show you guys my plan on that here in just a little bit. But right now I'm changing the oil on the Dakota. I want to see how this thing is holding up since I did the head swap and put the new lifters in and all that jazz. So I think uh, when I changed the oil, there was a whole bunch of um, metal particulate um, on the end of the magnet on the drain plug. Uh, I should have showed you all that. But I think that's because of the brand new lifters and new rockers and everything else but just in case i'm going to cut this oil filter open and i don't have a fancy opener but i'll show you guys what i do so just kind of clamp it in a vise i got some tim snips and i just carefully cut around it these actually work really good for this because they fit in the groove after you make the initial cut the initial the initial cut's not easy um, but we'll see what happens. Let's get all the way around here. All right. 
you don't want to use like a hacksaw or something else that's gonna generate metal flakes because then you're gonna not know if, if your motor's having an issue there it goes cool so now i gotta pry it out i think sorry guys all right so that actually came out very easy and now we got the filter how does this come out same way yeah all right show you what I'm gonna look through it next all right so I just want to see looking in it to see if there's any kind of metal flakes or anything to be really worried about and there's a lot of dirt and grime in it but I'm not seeing metal flakes I think I'm okay just a lot of particulate may have been from cleaning everything when I did the head gasket. All right, so it's kind of hard to see. Maybe you'll be able to. It's a little glittery in there. I don't know. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what it has to do with. I'll pour it out in this rag here. Kind of just look at it and. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see much. Man, it's a little glittery. Oh, I don't know why. Hmm. Well, there's not much I can do about that now. I don't know if there's much I can do about it in the first place. I don't know if it's normal wear and tear after a cam install or what. There's definitely not 3,000 miles on this thing. They're not big chunks though. It's just really, really small chunks. Chunks I don't like though. Don't like chunks at all. I think I have good news. <laughs> I reached out to a buddy of mine to talk about that glitter and he reminded me that I changed the retainers when I put the new heads on. I've not changed the oil since I put the new heads on the motor. And when you put new retainers on and uh, keepers and all that jazz, they wear a little bit. So usually on the first oil change, it's a little glittery. This is very fine glitter and it doesn't look like it went through the motor because when I go through the filter, and I'll show you all that again, uh, there's nothing in there. And man, do I feel better. So you can see there's no like metal in there anyway. So anyway, I feel a lot better knowing that because I didn't think about that. So good, good news I think. I was gonna kind of send it either way. It doesn't run like it's hurt or anything like that, so that's really good to go. And now, just got a few more things to do, and then I'll show you what I'm gonna leave out on the pack. I have consolidated now to two bins. So these are all the extra parts, little doodads and things that I have. You know, I've got coal packs in here. I've got my electric fan, motor mounts, uh, like drill bits, thermostat, just some random extra parts, brake cleaner, stuff like that. We're going to need it. This is going to be my like, you know, oil bin. So I've got extra transmission fluid, oil change stuff. Uh, I need to put the filter in there before I forget, which is, is this it right here? Nope. That one is then. All right. So oil filters in there now. And what's cool is I can put the oil tub in here now. There's enough room for me to get it down. Trash bags in there. So down to two totes other than I might bring some of those over there. Those are all empty uh, for clothes. Um, but we did find out you can uh, do laundry at all the hotels you're staying at. So we might definitely try to do that to 
not pack so heavy. Um, so I still have, this is like my hotel cart. Has all my power tools, regular tools. Um, and then I'll have that extra thing of tools there. Still gonna bring my big Arctic cooler cause I just don't have a smaller one and I don't wanna spend any more money. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring that and we're gonna have a small one that's inside the truck as well. But we wanna try to keep as much water on this as possible. Um, I am gonna forego bringing extra tires. So I'm not bringing these and I'm not bringing those. Um, yeah, just talking to a buddy of mine that has done it on drag radios before. He didn't really bring any extra tires. Um, and it was okay. There is a flat tire kit that I bought that I will be bringing if I didn't already throw it in there. Which it may have already. Is it, is it in here? Aha! Flat tire kit. So that'll go in there. And then I got some ropes. Which I'll show you guys what they're gonna do in just a moment or two so i'm gonna repack this thing again and see what i can come up with um i'm gonna put everything together because i want to just see it all together first and we'll, we'll go from there so okay here is the uh here's the whole package Definitely feels a whole lot less than it was. Still seems like a decent amount of stuff, but it's not gonna be too bad to get all together. So, now, just gotta get it all lined out in there. We'll see how that works. I think that did it. I really feel a lot better with the amount of stuff back here. <clears throat> it's not quite as heavy on the tires too, so I'm not going to be worried as worried about the yoke. Front one's heavy. The rest of them aren't too bad. But I don't know if you saw this, but I'm going to wrap, tie these two things here because I can get to everything in this immediate area and pull it out pretty quickly. But these. I can yank on them and get those tubs out. Be the easiest way to get them out. I'll still have to climb in to, to put them in, but I can pull those out that way. And uh, pretty sure everything's pretty safe over here. Just gotta remember, you have to mine that battery, and make sure it stays in good place. But <clears throat> put uh, luggage stuff in there. I even have room for another bin, like on top of that one right there, if I quickly need it. Um, but I'm a lot more comfortable with this setup. So it's gonna be a little interesting not having a spare at all, but I don't think I'm the only one that does it this way. And if I ever run slicks, I have a thing for the top um, that actually holds kayaks that I can put on and then strap those wheels to. So that might be for something in the future, but uh, I think that's it. I think uh, uh, all's changed. Uh, I decided I'm not gonna change the transmission fluid because it looks really good. It probably less, has less than 500 miles on it since I changed it and the filter. So I don't see a lot of reason to change that um, if it's running and driving good, which it is. So I've got one small thing left to do and I'm gonna put wire in a switch to turn the electric fan on so I don't have to have the ignition on when I'm running it. I think that might help save my O2 sensor because I don't want it heating and running all the time if nothing's going on. So. Uh, trying to figure out where I'm going to put that, but that's just a quick uh, wire in, and um, you know that's that's pretty much it. So um, we'll be loading up Saturday and uh, doing uh, one of my dreams. This is a bucket list item for me that I'd never thought I'd be able to get done anytime soon, more or less in the truck that I drove to high school on. I'll give you the whole lowdown on that if you're new to the channel, but. 
I also painted the door. So the cab's painted, the bed's still not painted, and I still gotta do the roof, but yeah, it's better than the stained primer that was on it before. I just I had to clean it up just a little bit. So anyways, guys, if you're new to the channel and you're just checking it out, subscribe if you like what's going on, because come Saturday, it starts the whole Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0, and I'm gonna try to post every day. I have no idea how that's gonna go, but I'm gonna try my best to post every day and edit every day and uh, do what I've been dreaming of doing for many, many years. So thanks everybody for the support. Wish me luck. Remember the goal is to finish and have fun. So that's what we're gonna do. Until next time, you know the deal. Y'all be good.